Welcome back to HRN HQ, Ed DeRosa with Scott Shapiro, who is on the east end of Louisville in Middletown. Bringing the band back together, Scott. Good to have another video with you. It's been a while. Absolutely, buddy. Good to uh, good to be on with you. We did this once or twice in a past life of ours. And, of course, we've been able to reconvene both in person, fairgrounds a couple of times, and just in general at Churchill and whatnot. But, uh, yeah, great to be back and a loaded, uh, loaded Saturday of action in the uh, from every, pretty much every, across the country. Whether it's Gulfstream, Santa Anita, Turfway, it's going to be a lot of fun. Gotham at uh, Aqueduct, uh, but we are looking at Santa Anita, which is how our relationship started. You were uh, in California when we started working together uh, with Daily Selections. Uh, you were already doing your own picks, scooping place pickalls or whatever pool that was. Uh, we'll, we'll see what uh, magic you're able to conjure up. But uh, you mentioned the Fountain of Youth card at Gulfstream. There's a coast-to-coast -coast pick five, mandatory payouts on the pick sixes. The San Felipe, which is what we're going to start with, actually is the last race before the pick six. We are going to talk about the big cap, which caps off that mandatory payout. But the San Felipe, and uh, curious to get your impressions, because this is sort of my thesis statement on this race. To me, this is the first prep we've had, maybe outside the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, where I feel like we're going to get legitimate read on the derby depth and field based on what happens here now we've had some winners the risen star uh, the rebel they're in the derby with 50 points no questions asked but i feel like even the second and third place finishers here could be legitimate contenders going forward i think that's a fair point i thought going into both the risen star and the rebel which were the start of the championship series races 50 points to the winner i thought we would get a lot of answers but leaving those races, I didn't feel that was the case. And while those horses were good winning uh, Angel of Empire, of course, and Confidence Game, both at pretty good prices, I don't know if they ran fast enough to really light up anybody's eyes or get them, you know, make people excited thinking they were legitimately going to be the favorite in the Derby. And I think if you look at the field here in the San Felipe, there's plenty of horses that have run, you know, close to as fast as Forte did last year. Or, you know, I think what, that's what you're kind of referring to. There's legitimately horses that have run a little faster than the majority of runners coming out of the Risen Star and Rebel. Yep, that's exactly right. And I, I would say in my mind, there's three and you can kind of figure them out by, based on my fair odds because they're the lowest three prices. Uh, Hijazi, National Treasure and Skinner all have races that are right there with Forte, maybe a touch slower. My struggle, Scott, in handicapping this race, and, and you know I'm a big numbers guy, is Hijazi and Skinner have pretty good figures last out, faster than National Treasure in terms of that best figure. But National Treasure has a really good two-year-old foundation. He absolutely has to move forward based on the numbers he earned as a two-year-old. But they were fast already, and if he does move forward, I think he could be the best of this group. That's where the gambling comes in is, you know, which of these horses actually repeats their best number. Depending on who it is, that's probably your winner. Makes it a really compelling race. Yeah, we don't always agree as we, uh, in, well, you know, in life, but in terms of uh, <laughs> handicapping horse races, much more so. But um, I'm with you on that. I think you pointed out the horses that have run the fastest, of course, which, uh, you know, whatever metric you're looking at. But National Treasure did so as a two-year-old. And if you remember, going into the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, he was the other Bafford. Cave Rock, of course, was the prohibitive favorite in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. But National Treasure was getting a lot of buzz. And I don't think this is a horse that's had – perfect voyages in either of his most recent starts in the sham when he finished third and the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. So I think he's got the foundation, like you said, Ed, to uh, take that step forward, but he will need to do so probably to get the job done here. And he is, uh, I guess, I don't know, th technically is in a new barn, whether you want to say that's theoretical or not, I guess is up to you uh, with the Actine, as is the Jazzy. So, you know, we'll see how they do for them. And Skinner is with John Sheriffs, uh, nominated to the National Racing Hall of Fame, and I will be voting for him. Uh, I think he's deserving, and, and certainly if Skinner treads a path, would add to the resume. But uh, I thought that was a great uh, last out performance. I have been trepidatious, and it worked in my favor when I was so bearish on Cyclone Mischief in the Holy Bull. I definitely don't like overall seeing the best performance come with Lasix. 
And now we're back off. So I am a little nervous about that, but I do feel with the presence of the Bafferts, to me, even though I have Skinner listed as my third most likely winner based on fair odds, I think I'm most likely to get the price I want on him. So I am going to make him my pick because I think he's the horse I'm most likely to bet. But this is going to be a test for him as much as anyone. Right. He's taken on winners for the first time. He also draws outside. Um, in a full field here, going the mile on a 16th, which could be tricky, whether that leads to a wide voyage under Victor Espinosa or maybe just ideally if, for, if you're wagering on him, you'd like to just see him take a tuck because he doesn't have the early speed. <laughs> I do think there will be contention. But you brought up a great point at the Lasix. I mean, he took the big step forward. Now, if I want to be on his side or pro Skinner, I would say he did run a pretty big number uh, in the Del Mar Futurity. Uh, in terms of Brisnet, which obviously I look at a, as a Churchill employee, 92 and then the 96 last time out, not quite as big a number in thoroughbreds. But to me, he's going to be finishing well. The question is, what kind of voyage is he going to get? And, you know, obviously taking on much better competition than he has, at least than he did in that maiden breaking effort. Uh, those are the the top three. Uh, obviously, I think will be uh, well. Certainly, the the two Yak teams are going to be the top two choices. Anyone on the outside uh, catch your eye in terms of uh, either an upset chance in the win end or someone you wouldn't mind uh, sneaking in there in the verticals with this big field? You know, I I think that the the public's going to have it right in this race. Uh, with I do think Kajazi may go end up going off favored, and if that's the case, I would might might have some interest in terms of a win wager at National Treasure, who I think has the foundation. I think the inside draw, and I think a favorable uh, race shape. Kajazi to me has to prove at this point that he wants to go buy horses. If I'm going to take a short price on him, he was very impressive last out, but did it on the front end and did it at one turn. Very unlikely, in my opinion, and I could be wrong that he's on the lead with a go rocket ride coming in, shipping in, not shipping in, stretching out, trying winners for the first time. Maybe they go at it a little bit early, but either way, I don't think Kajazi is going to be loose on the lead. So to me, he's definitely capable of winning this race, but I'm a little bit worried about the trip. Yeah, and and I'm with you on price. I do think he will be favored. So, uh, you know, certainly that's part of it. And then he and Go Rocket Ride that you mentioned both coming off Lasix as well. So uh, that's a wild card as much for, for either of them as well. And National Treasure has never run on it. So we know what he does without it. Uh, and as we said, the, the foundation's there. So very much uh, eager to see what the board looks like. Uh, I'm expecting Skinner to be the one I'm most intrigued by price-wise. Uh, but agree with you, National Treasure is certainly going to be a look. And and I I have him as the most likely winner, but there's no shot he's going to be 3-1. to one. So Hijazi, for me, is just a, a horse I'm planning not to play. Yeah, that makes sense to me. And it is interesting, as you mentioned, this race not a part of that mandatory pick six, but is – a part of the cross country pick five, right? Which is a very yes. attractive wager as well. I think it's the final three races at Gulfstream and then the fifth of sixth at Santa Anita. And I do think this is a race where, you know, people might lean on favorites. What do you think though? Do you think it's because of the field size and a little bit of unknown might maybe a little contrarian to, to single in here? Uh, yeah. I mean, I would say one issue with the fountain of youth though, is uh, maybe a lot of people will be singling Forte. Right. Uh, so I, I can, and I haven't looked at any of the other races besides the three-year-olds, but I could definitely, I wouldn't make a case for, okay, now we have two likely winners, or even if you're two or three deep in the San Felipe and you want a single Forte, if you end up liking the chalks in the other races, there actually might be the opportunity to be really narrow, hit it a few times. We all know how our peers myself included to a fault, unfortunately, play these pick fives. They think, oh, where's it going to blow up? And they spread and they spread. I spread. I shouldn't use third person. I do it too, wrongly sometimes. Um, <coughs> and there's not like if you like three two to one shots and can string them together, you're going to get an overlay price. So no, take your no, stand if you have it. Definitely without question. I mean, these things tend to pay – extremely well that wager yeah. well the dollar minimum too 
Right. That will help. And I think it, you know, while Forte might be the favorite and we're not analyzing the fountain of youth here, it could be contrary in a single in this spot. And obviously I'm, I'm with you. I haven't gotten a look at the other three legs. I've only taken a look at the Derby preps uh, thus far, as well as the big cap, which isn't a part of it, but it could be an interesting move to single a national treasure, single a Skinner, especially. I mean, if you're <laughs> in Skinner, I don't think anybody's going to be singling and people right. will use the horse, but I think that would be an aggressive contrarian single. All right. Well, uh, we'll certainly uh, update uh, come Saturday. I don't think weather is an issue this week at Santa Anita, thankfully. So hopefully a, a big day for them. And it ends with uh, maybe a race that's, that's fallen off a little bit because of the international group ones uh, that come into prominence uh, within our generation, the Dubai World Cup and most recently the Saudi Cup. But, you know, as a is a race fan, the big cap to me stands right there with the Met Mile and Jockey Club Gold Cup in terms of some of the, you know, all time great races. Uh, so I always like when this one comes around mile and a quarter. Uh, so you got that sort of equalizer as well. And uh, I think this is one of the bigger fields we've seen in a while for the big cap. It could end up showing us the leader of the division after Taba laid an egg. And I'm really interested in the turf to dirt move of Scarlet Fusion. Shodi can win with a big number going a mile and a half, a rare cutback to a mile and a quarter. Maybe some of the best numbers aren't dirt, but given his pedigree, I really like him in this spot. Man, I'm still hurting from uh, the June 5th of last year race where he was almost 38 to one in his first start for Joe Sharp and got mm. the neck by injunction. I was live in the horizontals. <laughs> one of the more memorable, unfortunate moments of my uh, handicapping 2022 season. Interesting move to ship out there off the win in the Connolly, but uh, he's going to be a good price, I would have to think. And this is just speaking to your point before. I mean, this is a really, you know, I don't think this race is anywhere near what it used to be in terms of star power. No. And I don't know, maybe the division leader for a short term. I don't know if I think this is a <laughs> star studded group with a horse of the year candidate, but this is a tough race and this is fun. And I'm going to look to a price as well in this one. All right. Well, uh, before you say who that is, I did want to know, because when I looked, it was like, oh, Hopper may, you know, has some good races to fund it. Uh, they both have speed, though. Now, uh, they're both trained by Baffert, so he can pull the strings a little bit, depending on who he wants to do what. But there's definitely pace in here for a 10 for a long affair. That was another reason I, I kind of thought Scarlet Fusion could fit. Uh, Proxy certainly uh, is a no name. Those usually take money. Where'd you end up? I landed up, ended up in, uh, on number one, there goes Harvard, who I Ooh. think a pretty big price here. Because wow, that should be, a, he'll be a bigger price than Scarlet, no? I think so. Um, maybe with the with Sharp out in California, maybe that'll help the price. I know when we think of Sharp, you know, we think of him as a barn that's going to take money here in Kentucky and, and right. in New Orleans and whatnot. But out there, he's not going to be a real known commodity. And um, But yeah, there goes Harvard to me. Six races over the main track at Santa Anita. Has hit the board in all six. Last time, clearly a prep. It didn't go very well, but he never really relaxed in that Thunder Road, a grade three, uh, a one mile event over the sod there. Michael McCarthy openly talking about how it was kind of a prep. And prior to that in the San Diego, just was ranked, just didn't get out of the gates well, never was comfortable. But if you go back to the Gold Cup uh, at Santa Anita back on May 30th, which is at this mile and a quarter distance, he ran a career best effort, 104 on the Brisnet scale, winning that race at nearly nine to one. And you talked about it, Ed. There's a lot of speed in this race, in my opinion. There's the Bafferts, which are unlikely to go at it. But you've got Stiletto Boy, who crossed and cleared in the Pegasus World Cup. You've got Scarlet Fusion, who I think will probably be putting some pressure on the speed horses with uh, the aggressive Edwin Maldonado aboard. So I want to look to a horse at a price that can come from out of it. And I just think this horse is going to get completely overlooked. Uh, I agree. I mean, I, I think he'll be definitely won't be the longest shot, but I mean, he'll be, uh, a, I guess you wouldn't separate at this point cause it's the last leg of the pick six, but it, it would be a punctuation mark for sure. If you can get live to him and, uh, is someone who I don't want to say regularly plays Woodbine, but I'm certainly familiar with the product up there. Uh, and he's just 12%, but 
my feeling is I, I want to run the HR and impact. My guess is he's not getting bet as much as, uh, you know, your Pratt's, your Hernandez's, et cetera. Uh, I think Kamara is a fantastic rider and he, he certainly is going to, you know, give it to you in the lane. So uh, you, you've talked me on to using this one for sure. Yeah, I mean, this is just a horse that does better, runs better as the distances get longer. He's kind of a grindy type of horse. It's going to need the right setup. Of course, like anybody coming from off the pace in a big race, he's going to need the right trip. But I think we're going to the right price to gamble. And uh, the rail in this situation is, is where I'd want to be. All right. Uh, that's the big cap, which uh, I was going to say has three Bafferts, but I just – Saw New Grange is no longer in that barn and hasn't been for a while, but uh, forgot about that. But uh, who's favored here? That's the a funded? good question because we're recording it before the morning lines are yeah. out. I think the funded off of the runner up in the in the Pegasus and those wins before it and the good record over the track and being a Baffert will be favored. But New Grange is going to take a bunch of money as well. Hopper was favored against New Grange last time. I would think those are the three with proxy maybe getting some support. But, you know, a Michael Stidham horse shipping cross country after an underwhelming effort in the Pegasus. Those would be the four, I think. Everybody else should be a really square price. And this is a and maybe Warren takes some money for Cox. This is a really fun, challenging race. Definitely uh, one of the more um, challenging big caps that I can remember in recent years. Yeah. And uh, 830 Eastern. So uh, those who are in tune with the Bataglia Turfway, uh, you'll have this race as well to close Marathon out the Sunday. Marathon, Marathon day. Marathon day. Yeah. That yeah, is for sure. Know. When does Golfstream start? 11 a.m.? I haven't looked at first post for it, but you know, on their big days, what do they have? 12 or 14 or 14, 14. They've got to be starting at 11 or 1130 yeah. for so, Yeah. So uh, get that coffee ready early, the hot <laughs> tea late, maybe some soda, uh, some beers, hopefully to celebrate the winnings. But, uh, you know, rumors, rumors, Buffalo. I don't, you know, the wings are normally for me when the day is kind of complete, you know, I go out for the wings. I can watch a race or two of Turfway at rumors. And, uh, yeah, we'll give a shameless plug to Rumors. Uh, both of us somehow been here years and love wings and have tried many a restaurant in the Middletown area live, working from that area. Never been. Never made now it. we know, though. Best wings in town, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah be definitely best Buffalo style. Okay. Well, what, what's the other style that you – I mean, I would say, like, the barbecue, baked wings. I like Franklin Avenue Beer Depot. Okay. Yeah, I guess I don't really eat wings other than buffalo, come to think of it. I mean, not that I'd be – I'm against it, but if I'm going out for wings, I'm getting that tangy, hot buffalo sauce. Yeah, that's the good stuff. All right, well, hopefully we gave some good stuff uh, between these two races. A little Fountain of Youth look, but definitely San Felipe, Big Cap, Coast to Coast Pick 5, Mandatory Payout Pick 6. Scott, appreciate your time and thoughts. Yeah, man, good, good time getting back together. Look forward to doing it again soon. And uh, this time of year, as the weather gets warmer, thankfully, is just such a fun time. These Saturday cards from different tracks with the derby preps on the line. Lots to look forward to. Absolutely. All right, well, we'll look forward to hopefully cashing some tickets. And uh, that's it for now from HRN. Good luck, everybody.